Hi everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. I am super excited to have you here today and before we get started, be sure to subscribe to my channel that way you don't miss out on any of the fun crafty content we have coming. Today's video, I am going to unbox this sublimation oven from Craft Express. I'll link it down below. This oven is really cute. I've seen a couple pictures of it, so I haven't really played with one at all yet. I've only seen pictures, so I'm really excited to see what this looks like. Craft Express did send this to me, so thank you to them. But I do always try to give you guys that 100% honest, unbiased review because I won't accept a product unless I actually want to check it out and they agree to allow me to give you a 100% honest review. So this box is pretty large and I'm just trying to see if it tells me like how much it weighs. So let me look and see. So this item is about 25 pounds in the box, so that's something to consider if you're having it shipped to you because obviously you're going to need to pick it up off of your porch or wherever they deliver it to. I will say it did come pretty well packaged. The box looks like it's in good shape. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this open and we're going to go ahead and see what we think so far. Whatever we would do, we do it just for fun. So it does have a thing on the top that says, Handle with care, do not press or throw. I can't imagine anyone wanting to throw a 25 pound box, but you never know. Now I probably will need to put this on the floor to get it out of the box because it is inside an additional box inside of this brown box. So let me go ahead and put this on the floor so I can get the other box out. Okay, that was a workout, but I got it out, and like I said, the box looks like it's in decent shape, so I'm not worried about it being like damaged or anything in shipping. So I'm gonna go ahead, and I already got those ones. I popped those when I got this out of the box. I'll go ahead and open the main box, and let's see what is in here. So we have a big piece of styrofoam. I can see the plug, so I'm gonna go ahead and move that out of the way. And I'm gonna try to lift the first piece of styrofoam up. I'm going to put this over in the other box, maybe, and it looks like I can probably get the plastic off of this, and then it looks like we can lift this out, I think, because I'm short. I'm literally standing on my tiptoes so that I'm not behind the box. This is me, not on my tiptoes, so I'm on my tiptoes right now, um, trying to make sure you guys can see me. So I'm going to need to put this on the floor to get this out of the box. for their products and then you have another bag that looks like it has the tray in it a oven mitt for safety and then you have the directions so this is the elite sublimation oven and I am excited to check this out so there are some pieces of tape that you'll need to remove before you do really anything else I always recommend making sure you remove any like packaging before you start before you plug it in before you do anything else Take off all the packaging because you don't want to accidentally like leave a piece on and then end up with a big mess because there is some packaging inside the oven as well. There is a note to say, please take out, take out the separator before use. And then there is some cardboard and another note of please take out the separator. Get that out. That one I'm struggling with. Okay. And we'll double check to make sure like what they call the separator. That way we don't mess anything up. But there's some tape over here. And then there's another card, a piece of card. And then this looks like it's a label. I can't really see that side. So looks like I got everything except the cover on the handle. So I'll just cut that off with my scissors. This is just a little plastic that they put on the handle to keep it from getting damaged in shipping. They don't want it obviously to get scratched. They want you to have a cute, pretty new oven. All right, get that taken off. Okay. 
So they give us a little manual. So let's look at that and see what that contains. Looks like that has some great information all about your oven, tells you all the measurements, what each of the buttons does. Gives you all the directions on how to use the control panel. Talks all about how to print your tumblers. And then it gives you some information on the different items that they sell and the time and temp and pressure to print them at. And then it just gives you some more options and then also some troubleshooting information, which is great. But I am gonna show you the basket that comes with it. So this is what your um, items will sit in. You don't put them directly on the bottom. You put them in the little basket guy and he slides in. I'm not sure which direction he goes. So we're just gonna kind of, definitely doesn't go that way. So he has to go with the little handles on the sides. There we go. I was just putting him in at a fun, funky angle. But you can go either towards the top or there is also an option for a little closer to the bottom. You can slide him in. And I'll sit down there as well. So this is all that the oven looks like. It's got a big window in the front. Again, you get the oven mitt, the directions, a bunch of packaging. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out a couple different designs that we're going to use on some of the blanks. And we're going to test this out, see what we think. I have never used a convection oven or any oven to sublimate, so I'm really excited to try this. And I want to try this with you guys because I want you guys to see that somebody who's never done it before, what do I think of how easy this is to use? Is it hard to use? Do I find it confusing? So we're going to get started and get ready to use this. I'm so excited. So now we're ready to apply the designs to the blanks. So I grabbed a couple of different blanks that they sent with the oven to give this a try. So I have a metal coffee cup. This is really cute and it is metal so you cannot put this in the microwave. We have a ceramic coffee mug. This one is going to be microwave safe. We have a frosted glass beer can style with the bamboo lid. Now you will want to take any lids off of your products before you sublimate. So I'll just do that now. And then I'm gonna use this big 30 ounce skinny tumbler. And again, you wanna make sure that you do remove any lids, straws, packaging, anything like that. And then I also like to, usually there's like a little sticker on the bottom. I do like to take that off as well. And it's super easy, that just peels off super quick. And it's really on the bottom, I think, of all of them. But you can just get like a nail under there and they'll come right off. You can also use an adhesive remover, all sorts of options to get those little stickers off. But they come off pretty quickly, pretty easily. It's not on the bottom of the mug, but it is on the bottom of the frosted glass. So we'll take it off of that one. There we go. Now I printed out a couple of different designs for each of our products. And when you print off sublimation, you wanna make sure that you are mirroring your images. So I just printed these off really fast. Some of the designs are from Design Bundles and some are from Creative Fabrica. So we have this little pug. I have this little tis of the season. And then we're gonna do a full mug wrap, which I'm terrible at when I do the full tumbler wraps. But we're gonna try it anyways. I'm not great at them. I haven't done a ton of them, so I'm not amazing. But we're gonna give it a shot. So what you wanna do is you're gonna take your blank here and you're gonna to wanna to use some heat tape. This is just some blue heat tape, again, from Craft Express. I used to have a really fancy tape dispenser for my heat tape, but I dropped it and I broke it. So I have to get a new one. So we'll just have to use the scissors and the old fingers to do this with, but it's fine, not the end of the world. So what I like to do is I'm gonna cut off a kind of long sheet, like little strand of the heat tape so I just cut off kind of a long strand and then I will just cut it down and just put it right on the edge of the blank that I'm using just along the rim. And that just makes it a little bit easier when you're going to place your designs. That way you have your heat tape all ready to go. You don't need a ton of tape for this because you are going to be using a um, shrink wrap to help with this. So like I said, I just take it and put it along the edge. It works perfect. It's a great way to hold that on. And we're gonna be doing this little one with the flowers on it for this. It's super fun. This one's really, really cute. So this one says she believed she could, but she couldn't be bothered, which seems pretty accurate. So now that I've got my heat tape ready and my design, you wanna place it with the colored side against your mug. And sometimes with this, it's a little hard because you wanna make sure that you get it kind of centered onto your mug, which I find a lot easier if I lay my mug this direction and then I'm gonna grab one of my pieces of tape 
and I'm gonna find where my design is, which you can kind of see a little bit through your um, paper here. And I'm just gonna line it up on to my mug. And you wanna kind of keep the handle in consideration when you're lining this up, because based on where your handle is can be based on where you put your design. So I'm gonna put a little bit of tape on either side, and you wanna make sure that you keep the design really tight against the mug. So I'm just pulling it as I'm kind of pressing it over. Now for this one, I'm gonna do both sides of the mug, just cause I can and I just think it's fun, but I am gonna go ahead and just trim off a little bit of the paper on this side just because it's gonna be a little bit in the way. So you can trim them down pretty close to the design if you want to. And then I'm just gonna kind of figure out about where it goes. And again, I'm just using the handle to kind of help me center it. And once I'm pretty happy with it, again, I'm just gonna take some tape, place my tape down, take some tape and place my tape down. So you just wanna make sure everything's really tight. This one feels a little bit loose, so you can go ahead and if you just peel your tape back up, you can put it right back down. I like to just make sure everything's really tight and this one just was a little bit loose. So I'm just gonna pull that tight again. There we go, that is much better. So we're gonna go ahead and do that to all of our designs. I'm gonna do the rest of them pretty quickly and then I'll show you how I do this one since I'm really bad at it. You can laugh at me and see how terrible I am. We're now moving on to the tumbler and I'm gonna voice this over because I didn't talk for some reason. So what I do is I wrap it and I get it so that I'm happy with like where it, lay, it lays, which means I'm gonna tap it on the table, get it even with the bottom of the cup, and then I'm gonna wrap it and I'm gonna take my scissors and cut just a little slit where the two pieces of paper meet. Now, you could absolutely use a paper trimmer to get a straight line, but why would I do that when I can just admit that I can't cut a straight line and attempt it anyways? So I'm just gonna cut that edge off because we don't need that part for our tumbler, and you can just toss that away. That's just extra paper because I didn't measure my tumbler. Then you wanna take your paper and you want to wrap it very tightly around your tumbler. And again, I match mine up with the bottom. So I set it on the table and then I wrap my paper around it. Now I do have a little overlap, but honestly, once this was done, I didn't really notice any problems, but you'll see that you need to pull it really, really tight. And then you wanna tape along that edge. You're gonna put quite a few pieces of tape on this. So don't worry too much about that first piece. It's really just to hold it down. Um, but I like to just kind of get that right in the center and I use a fairly long piece of tape just so that it holds it better. Then you're gonna wanna grab some additional tape and you can see here, like my tape's not even straight, does not matter. You just wanna make sure that it's held on and that it's held on tight. By doing this, it's gonna allow that paper to get a really good seal around your cup. Now you do wanna tape down the entire seam of this or you're gonna end up with a line. So you'll definitely wanna make sure that you're using multiple pieces of tape. So I tape the lower portion and then I make sure my tape goes down on to the bottom of my cup. It's gonna make it a lot easier when you go to remove your design. Then I'm gonna use another long piece and put it at the top. But first, you wanna trim off that edge at the top so you have that extra like overlay. I didn't get great video of this, so I apologize, but I'm just taking my scissors and I'm just trimming along the top of the cup. It doesn't really matter again if that's straight or anything, just so long as it's kind of not there. By getting it off, it gets it out of the way and it's gonna allow you to have a tighter seal at the top of your cup as well, especially since you're using shrink wrap. So then I wanna make sure I tape that down really well. And then I always just leave an extra piece of tape inside the cup, again, making it easier to remove the tape later. The next step that we need to do is to place the shrink wrap around them. So I'm gonna print these in, or I'm gonna cook these on two different times because this, the two mugs require 360. So I'm gonna set those off to the side really quick. But these two go in at 356 for six minutes. So we'll do these two together. So what you're gonna do is take your little shrink wrap sleeve, which is this plasticky stuff, and you're gonna place your blank into the sleeve, and you'll see that it just sorta slides on in. And I'm gonna do that for both of these items. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this one in. I will say I found it easier to set it on to the table and then kind of 
put the sleeve over it for sliding it in because these do fit a little tight so you'll want to kind of figure out what works best for you but this way seemed to work best for me because like I said these do sit a little bit tight but that's okay and then you want to kind of push it so it's in the center of the sleeve so you have a little like extra on the ends so you can see I have a little extra on both ends and then you're going to take a heat gun now I have a black and decker and this heat gun is fantastic and put it on low and it takes a second to heat up so what I do is I just hold it against my hand moving it so that I don't burn myself but I just let it get warm and then all you need to do is just kind of take it over your shrink wrap and see how it's shrinking you can really see it there on the ends you just want it to shrink so that it's nice and tight against your cup and I recommend using the low setting not the high and I just want to make sure I get the top section I want to get all around the top and the bottom and just make sure that it's good and on there. So that looks good, looks nice and tight. Any bubbling you see is not a big deal, but I like to just make sure that it's on there really well. So that looks good. So then we'll do the, the last one next. Now I like to keep it on my table for the first initial like heating, just so I can kind of like spin it on my table while it's warming. And you don't want to like hold it in one place. You want to move it back and forth and let it shrink that shrink wrap. And then again, I'm going to get around the bottom and I'm going to get around the top. And then again, I'm just going to give it a nice once over, just making sure that it's good and it's on there. Looks pretty good to me. Go ahead and turn your heat gun off and you want to set that somewhere where this part, this metal right here, is not going to touch anything because that metal gets really hot. Now we're ready to come to our oven. So what you want to do is it turns on automatically when you plug it in, but you can just hold this button and it will turn it back on. Now I know it's really hard for you guys to see because of the glare, so I'm going to see if I turn the light off if you can see it better. Much better. So we'll leave the light off so you can see what I'm doing. So you'll see that you have an upper and a lower oven. So the upper one is this right here. So you want to spin this and turn it to 360, 356, which 358 is close enough. And then you want to do the same for the lower. You want to turn that down. And 355, good enough for that. Then we want to change our time, and that is for six minutes. So you really got to turn this down because it comes automatically at 60. And we'll just set that for six minutes. Now it'll stop flashing for after you've kind of touched it for a minute. Once you set your heat and your time, all you have to simply do is press this knob, and you'll hear it start to buzz. That is it heating up. When it's fully heated up, what we're going to do is place our items into our oven so it's got this handy dandy little basket that you can pull out and then you place your items in now what's great about this versus like a tumbler press is I can actually fit multiple items in here at once now is he gonna roll to the front of course why wouldn't we but I'm gonna go ahead and put both of these in here together and then I'm gonna go ahead and push this back in now I'm a little concerned because this one just wants to roll and touch him, but I guess we can go this direction. There we go. That'll work a little bit better. He won't roll into him now. So we'll go ahead and put this back in. I'm going to make sure that this guy didn't roll into that guy. Now he's just going to keep rolling. It's fine. Close that. And then what you do is just press this and it will finish heating up because it cooled down a little bit from opening it. And then it'll start the countdown as soon as it is fully heated up. So it's almost done and it's really, really important that you don't touch these with bare hands. So you can use oven mitts or I have these heat gloves that have like a rubber on them. I love these, they're fantastic. I have never burned myself using them. And I do put them on both hands just because I may need to use my other hand to grab something and I just don't wanna do that um, without a glove on it to protect my hand. So what you're gonna see is it's gonna finish its countdown and we are gonna open the door when it beeps. So it's gonna beep. We're gonna open that door, it's gonna stop heating. Then what we're gonna do is pull these out, and again, make sure you're using your heat glove, and then I'm gonna put them down onto a heat press mat. You wanna make sure whatever you set them down on is heat safe, because these are hot, they did just come out of the oven. I'm gonna go ahead and close this up really quick, 
and we'll reset it while we're gonna let, let these cool for our mugs. So remember our mugs were 383. So we're just gonna go to like 385. And I'm not sure why this one is off a little bit. I'm gonna contact the company and ask them how to fix that. Cause that's at 386, that's at 385. They're supposed to be at the same, but that's fine. And then it is also, I believe for six minutes, I will double check that, but we're gonna go ahead and let this start heating up. And then I'm gonna let these two cool and then we'll take a look at them. So it's gonna beep. I find that super annoying. But so what I learned is that the coffee mug heats way longer. It heats for like 12 minutes. So I'm just gonna put the metal one in for this one. And we're gonna go ahead and place that in and let that one cook. Now that that one is finished, we're gonna go ahead and take it out. So I'm gonna reach in with my glove. And one thing I will say is that I did melt the um, shrink wrap a little bit. And apparently the shrink wrap also melted in the oven. So that's fun. I'm not sure why it did that. I'm a little concerned um, because we still have to do the mug. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna place this back in because the mug needs to um, be heated a little bit more for like longer time. So the mug says 12 minutes, which seems like a really long time, but we're gonna go with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and send this 12, hit the start button, it's gonna reheat up a little bit, and then we'll put the mug in. While we're waiting on the oven to get ready for the mug, I needed to cool it down a little bit because this actually presses at 360. It says for 12 minutes, it seems really long, but we'll try it. Um, so these two are cool, the tumbler and the glass mug. So we'll go ahead and look at these. Now they have supposedly somewhere a little perforated edge, but I don't know if I'm gonna find it on this one because it's not, like this one I can see it, but this one I cannot. So I don't know if this one has a perforated edge. So I'm just gonna use my nail and try to get this off. I make no promises that this is going to come off well, but we're gonna try. And I know you can definitely use like an X-Acto knife down it, that'll work too. But definitely wait till it's cool because otherwise you're gonna burn your hand. Let's see if we can get another good rip going. And that was not it. Try from the top maybe. Oh yeah, there we go, we got a good rip going. I think we, ah, got a little chunk left. So this is not the easiest part. But again, I know you can use a uh, X-Acto knife. I just didn't. I thought this would be easier. I was wrong. <laughs> you ever been wrong before? I was wrong. I might need to get the X-Acto knife just to get that little, oh wait, oh, 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 it might slide off. Okay, got that, sorry, I bumped you. So I will say that I can already see that I have too much ink on my uh, design from my printer. Because you can see through the glass, I don't know how well you guys can see that, let me see if I can get it to focus. So there's definitely some red bleed, but that is my printer's fault and not the blank's fault, not the pressing fault, it's my printer's fault. Um, so what I'm gonna do, try to rip this off, but you can see like it does stick a little bit, like see how it kind of ripped funny? If it does that, I'm gonna show you a quick way to fix that problem. But I was gonna try to peel it off that way, but apparently I need to peel the tape. I got the tape started. There we go. So it does have a little bit of red bleed, but again, that's my printer's fault and not the mug presses, like the oven's fault or anything. That's just my fault. But look at how cute. That's still really cute, even with a little bit of red bleed. It's not bad. Like it's not bad enough that you can even really see it on the glass. It more so kept a lot of like the color. I think it kept a lot of color. I think it looks really good. That's super cute actually. There's just a teeny bit of red bleed on the mittens, but I can't even see it unless I really look for it. So I'd call that one a win. Next one we got is our tumbler. Now this one you can see there's like a perforated edge. So I'm gonna try to peel on that for this one. But again, it's, you know, it only peels as well as it wants to, which is not well. Well, I thought I would do it without the knife, but I think we're gonna go ahead and bust the knife out just because this is super annoying. And I'm pretty sure we can just use some scissors, so let's give that a shot. We're just gonna just kind of gently run it down that perforated line. Yeah, that worked. Okay, lesson learned. Definitely just run a pair of scissors down it. I do still have a little bit stuck down here at the bottom. That should come off, and then we have our um, tape. I finally got the tape to peel. Jeez. Let's see. All right. Get that out of the inside. And then all we have to do 
Now again, the color issue is my printer and I know that for a fact because I did a test print and it came out similar. I just haven't had time to fix it. But like, that's pretty cute. Like it came out pretty good. The color is nice other than the bleed, which again, not the convection oven's fault. That is my fault. But I think that came out really, really cool. I think it looks pretty good. Especially for somebody who is really very bad at doing full tumbler wraps. It came out pretty nice, but you can sort of see the difference like from this side to this side with the color because this part is the part that printed first and then this is like the end of the print. So you can see that it was dumping a lot of ink. I need to do a head cleaning. I just have not. So that was kind of my own fault. Let's see if this guy is cool enough. He's cool enough. So let's go ahead and pull this off while we wait for the other one. And like I said, I melted this and I'm not really sure why it melted and I'm a little bit concerned that it melted. I'm not really sure why it melted. I did exactly like the book said to do, so I don't know. I'm going to contact them and just sort of see if maybe I did something wrong. But it doesn't look like it did any damage, so that's good. So we're just going to go ahead and try to get the rest of this off. This stuff is really hard to, like, break. So I would recommend grabbing a pair of scissors, especially because this goes, like, around this rim here. It is kind of a pain. So I just use the scissors to kind of break a line in it, and then it comes right off. So then all we got to do is peel off our paper. Now this one does have some bleed on it, again, from the ink over dumping. This one actually has a lot of that bleed on it. See that bleed? That is from my ink dumping too much. You can see it over here too, where there was no design because there's ink that's getting on to my paper because my machine has not been cleaned, my printer. So let me get you a good focus on this. See that, that is all from my printer, just dumping ink where it shouldn't. Not a big deal, easy to fix, and I will fix it. But I think otherwise, other than that, it came out really nice, especially in a sublimation oven. I think this was really cool. So let's go ahead and get that mug pressed, and then I'll show you what everything looks like. And we'll talk about my thoughts on the oven. All right, our mug is ready to go into our oven. And the one thing that I don't love, and I will tell you that I don't love, is that it beeps for like two seconds and lets you know that it's ready. But then it starts the countdown timer right away, which I find kind of annoying, but it is what it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy, I'm gonna attempt him, put him up straight. He's gonna cook for like 10 and a half minutes and let's see what happens. Mug's almost done. Uh, again, we cooked it for 11 minutes. It was a little bit confusing because each thing had a different time and temp on it. So I kind of went with the lower end just to see what would happen. So if this mug doesn't turn out, it may just be that I looked at the wrong information, but I did let them know that the information was a little bit confusing. So we're gonna let this beep and then I can open it and I will take it out. So it's gonna beep, it's very loud. And we're gonna go ahead and pull this out. And then we're gonna let this cool because again, it is really hot. Now I will say, notice it didn't melt like the other one. So I'm not really sure why the one on the metal cup melted. Um, that's gonna be something to think about. Now I'm gonna leave this open to cool off. I am gonna turn it off, however. So to turn it off, just hold the time button and it'll turn off. Just takes this three, five second hold and it turns off. So again, I'm gonna let this cool and then we'll pull it out. All right, this guy has cooled enough so that we can go ahead and open him. I'm gonna use my scissors because this doesn't have like a spot to pull it. And do I think this is gonna work? No. Listen, I'm clearly in need of practice on opening these like weird plastic covers. <laughs> not very good at it. But I think this one came off pretty easy, so it's not so bad. Messy, sure. But did it come off? Yes, it did. Okay, so this one is the one that we put the little pug on. Now I can already tell you that this also has that same issue with the ink, but again, nothing against the oven. It is all my printer, and I didn't realize it was gonna do it until I tested, and I had already printed everything, so I wasn't gonna reprint. But the color is really nice, and this one I did for the 11 minutes, and like I said, it was really confusing when it said like a certain time. So I just went with what felt right in my heart, which was 11 minutes. And I think it came out pretty nice, but again, you got the ink dumping issue, but that's a printer issue. But look at the colors, really bright on that pug. He looks really good and pretty nice, not bad. And honestly, the pink around it doesn't look terrible. It looks kind of intentional other than that his eyes turned pink. But again, that's my printer issue. So we have our glass can. I think this one came out really, really nice. I think this one looks really pretty. And then we have the tumbler, which came out nice. 
And then we have our metal mug, which again has that bleeding, but again, printer issue. But I still think it came out really good. Like the color's nice, the print looks nice. It's not ghosted or anything like that. And I promise you, I will clean my print heads. So now that we have worked with the convection oven a little bit, let me tell you my thoughts. I think it's really easy to work with. The directions are a little bit confusing, but once you really play with it and use it, they make a lot more sense. Also, the one thing that I don't love is that once it's done heating, it automatically starts counting. I do wish that there was an option for you to start the countdown because it starts pretty quickly. But I figure another way to kind of avoid that issue is maybe just add a minute to your time and that'll give you a little bit more time to place your items into the oven before it starts counting down. Otherwise, I think the controls are really great. I think it works pretty well. I do want to ask them about why mine is like a degree different on the top, but that's probably my fault and I just can't figure out how to like set that a little bit. But otherwise, I really do like it. Now as for how long it takes to actually press the items, it's a little bit longer than doing it with a traditional like tumbler press like I have from them, but at the same time, you can do multiples as long as they're pressed at the same time and temperature. So it kind of evens out if you're doing more than one. If you're somebody who just does like single tumblers or single mugs once in a while, a tumbler press might be the better choice for you, but if you like to do multiple things, definitely the oven is the way to go. I do think it was super simple. I think the presses, other than my problem with my ink, they came out really, really nice and vibrant, and I really, really love this one, which I realize has been sitting backwards, but I think the glass one came out really, really pretty. I also like the fact that these metal ones are so easy to do in the oven. I think it's really fun that they have so many different blank options, and I, what I also really loved is that I didn't have to rotate my tumbler when I was doing a full mug wrap. So if you're somebody who does a full wrap, an oven is a great option because you're not having to rotate. You obviously can, and a lot of people do, but I purposely didn't rotate because I wanted to see what would happen, and I think it came out great without rotating it. Like I said, I do have a little bit of a color issue, but that is my printer issue, not at anything against the blanks, the paper I used, or the oven. That's completely on me and what's going on with my printer. Definitely do need to address that, and we for sure will but right now I just wanted to try this, see what I thought, and let you guys know. So I do think that the oven is an awesome option. It is so big inside, you can fit so much in here, which is great. And if you're somebody who does things like shrinky dinks, you can do them in this oven too, which is pretty fun. I will have a shrinky dink video for you guys to check out. I didn't use the oven because I didn't think about it, but I think you could really use it for that as well. So there's a lot of options. Another cool thing is you can actually use this if you are a clay artist as well. You can bake clay in this, so that way you're not baking clay in an oven that you cook in, or you're not having to go out and buy just a separate oven just for clay. So if you do sublimation and clay, having an oven like this is a great idea, and it can fit a ton in here. Plus the timer is really, really great, so I do like that. It beeps really loud, which can be a good thing and a bad thing. I actually kind of don't mind that it beeps so loud just because it's easy to know that it's beeping. I have a press that beeps very, very quietly and I don't love it because it can be hard to hear, especially if you're somebody who likes to have music on or the TV on while you're crafting. Sometimes that beep can just kind of get lost in all the other noise. But with this, there's no doubt that this is beeping and what you need to do. I also love that it came with directions and it came with a little oven mitt. Now I didn't use this oven mitt just because I have heat gloves, but if you're not somebody who has like heat gloves, this oven mitt's pretty nice. I can grab things pretty easily and it does the job, but again, you wanna make sure you have some sort of oven mitt or heat gloves, something like that to work with. The directions, like I said, come with it, pretty easy to read. I did have some questions on like the mug temperature because the temperature on the box for the mug, the temperature on the directions from the oven and the temperature on the paper that came with all the stuff they sent me was completely different and so was the time. So I'm not exactly sure why that is, but I did send them a message and I'll put in the comments if they answer me back and let me know. But I did press this one at 11 minutes for 360 and I think it came out beautifully. So I would definitely highly recommend doing it at that temperature, but for sure I will find it out for you guys and let you know and I'll pin the comment for you. Now, if you're interested in grabbing this oven or any of the blanks, I'll put links down below for all of their fun stuff that you can get. 
they have a lot of really great products and I really do like the oven plus it's a super cute color it matches their heat press it matches the uh, tumbler press that I have so I just think it's really fun that all the stuff matches and it's just a cute like light blue I always love that color and I know it's sort of a silly thing to talk about is the color of the oven but truly it's pretty cute and I like the design of it too I just think it looks nice it looks kind of retro modern which I think is really fun now if you guys have any questions about this or anything else by all means let me know in those comments down below because I'm always happy to answer those for you be sure to check out the links in the description. You may need to click see more under the video. That way you can see everything and pick one up for yourself. I hope you all have a wonderful day and as always, happy crafting.